Hey everybody, Pastor Ethan here. Thanks for joining me today for this COVID update. I know this is exactly what you wanted uh, today. Gosh, we thought that we were through this, um, but things are not looking good in our own area. And so um, we wanted to talk today briefly about the COVID update for the Bridge Church specifically. And this is going to be a little bit longer than uh, some updates that we've done in the past, just because of the nature of this being kind of a local ordinance and, and as well, just the frustration and the agony of having to go through this process all over again. Uh, personally, I've, I've been so encouraged and excited to be back um, at the Bridge Church after a sabbatical and to be back with you and uh, I'm just praying that um, things turn around and we don't have to continue to move in a direction which is maybe even more than than just um, a mask. So I want to share with you um, um, what our uh, COVID policy is going to be and what we're going to do. But because of the nature of this, it's going to be a little bit longer. I want you to stick with me all the way to the end. And I want to pastor you today. I want to lead you. So this is going to be a few minutes. Um, but I want to I want to lead you and I want to pastor you as, as it's not just enough to, to get an update on a policy, but I want us to think about what this means for us as a community. We even talked uh, this past Sunday in our worship gatherings about how we do community. And so this is important for us as kingdom people, um, as gospel people to, to really process this um, together. And and um, I know that we've got the beautiful thing about our church is we have um, such a wide um, spectrum of diversity of opinion and background and ethnicity and education and all that stuff. And so um, I, I know that we got people all across the board and I'm not picking sides today, um, but just want us to um, come together and um, have some some agreement on on what this means for us and our church body. So uh, let's dive right into it. Uh, New Hanover County, as you are most likely aware, New Hanover County has issued a mask mandate for all indoor public spaces for the county. Um, we've been in conversation with uh, even some of our own doctors and people that are in the medical profession here in our county and at the hospital. And um, the hospital is just really overwhelmed right now. Um, cases are through the roof, um, running out of room, staffing is low. I mean, it, it's really, it's really um, uh, a challenge. Um, the, the difference between this um, mandate and, and other mandates in the past is that um, it's all the mandates um, over the past year or so have been coming from the governor, from Governor Cooper. And so they've been statewide mandates. And in this season, uh, the governor is letting local uh, municipalities and counties um, do their, their own uh, policies and mandates. And so it's different in, in that regard. But nonetheless, um, our county has issued a uh, countywide um, mask mandate for anyone that's in an in indoor uh, public uh, space. Now, I want to just acknowledge um, I've got the I've got the update. Um, our team has has worked through this. Um, our leadership team ha has gone through this and has discussed it. Um, I want to I want to acknowledge this is a little bit different, and I'll say a little bit confusing on the county's side. Um, but there are a number of different exceptions for this, which include anything from um, having a medical condition, or actively eating or drinking, or giving a speech or a broadcast, um, working at home or in a personal vehicle, a, a number of others. And then there's an exception as well for um, those who are participating in worship, religious, spiritual gatherings, funeral ceremonies, wedding ceremonies, or other activities constituting the exercise of First Amendment rights and therefore are exempt from all requirements. And so I want to recognize that um, as a religious institution, uh, based on the First Amendment, uh, we have the um, right and the freedom not to be bound by this mandate that has been issued by um, the county. Um, where this is confusing is this has been the, the way that the, all these mandates have, have worked over the past year. So in, in every one of the governor's um, uh, mandates and executive orders that I read, uh, I think every, every line of them, there was also the opportunity for religious institutions to not have to uh, be required to um, operate within um, the mandate. And the reason for that is because of the First Amendment and the separation of church and state. What that means is that the state's just not going to get in the church's business and tell them exactly what they have to do. They're going to recognize that level of respect. Now, some are going to read this and immediately say, and say, well, they're saying, you know, if you're a church or if you're a religious institution, you don't need to wear a mask. However, that's not the intent of um, 
what New Hanover County is saying. If the director of health and human services were sitting beside me here today, they're not going to say, oh, no, churches don't need to wear masks. You know, it's there's there's not a risk. You know, you just you just worship. No, they're just recognizing, hey, we're not going to tell the church what to do. The county director would say, please wear, wear a mask. They would say, you're probably one of the most high risk areas where you're gathering hundreds of people together in close proximity for a long period of time and talking and singing and you're at extremely high risk. Um, what that what that means is that I'm gracious or I'm grateful that they've given us the ability to make our own decision, but we believe it would be extremely prudent in this situation um, as a organization that gathers hundreds of people on a regular basis um, to adopt and to um, comply with the mandate, just like every other organization in our city has to, or our county has to, which is require masks for indoor um, events. And so um, our policy um, as a church uh, right now, or uh, beginning as of uh, today on Thursday and moving forward is that um, we will uh, require masks for indoor worship gatherings, events, ministry spaces, programs, anything that is a church function, including community groups or other kinds of meetings or whatever it is, it's a training. Um, we're going to require a mask for all indoor events and functions um, as a way to comply as best we can with what's happening in our local area and really to be um, a part of the solution and not a part of um, the problem. And so um, that's what that's what we're going to do. And that's going to be the policy that we're going to do um, moving forward. Um, and so let me let me pastor you now. OK, so um, let me lead you. Some of you are like, you know, hooray. And some of you are like, oh, my goodness, they're they're giving in to the government. I, we got people across the spectrum. Trust me. Now, let me just pastor you and lead you in how we should think about this, how we should respond to this, how we should operate together as um, a body. We're not taking sides here. Um, I don't have a secret, you know, strategy or campaign to, you know, fight for the right or fight for the left or, or, or be a part of any kind of political party or uprising or anything like that. No, we're trying to do what's prudent based on what the scriptures say, based on what, you know, loving followers of Jesus would do in this situation. We're not taking sides. Um, and we're just trying to do what is we feel like best in this situation. So let me encourage you with, with a few things. First of all, Scripture encourages us to, Jesus says, the two greatest commandments, to, to love God and then to love your neighbor as yourself. Um, this is an unbelievable opportunity where we can, man, we're trying to care for the well-being and the safety of our neighbors, of our friends, or the people that are in our city. We don't want to become a super spreader event and create more opportunity for a virus. We're in the middle of a global pandemic. We don't want to create uh, an opportunity for um, us to increase the, the virus, to overwhelm the hospital, to overload our medical professionals. Man, we want to love our neighbors well. And this is a this is an easy way to, um, to love our neighbors um, and actually demonstrate to a city that's looking at the church um, and what we're doing and how we're going to respond and say, no, we're, we want to be a part of the solution. We don't want to be a part of the problem. So, so hey, we're going we're gonna to love our neighbors well in this season. And the way that we're going to do that is comply with what our county is trying to do to, uh, to overcome a virus that has impacted um, many, many people in our um, area. And we want to promote human flourishing as best we can. We want Jesus followers to be known for promoting human flourishing and love our neighbors as ourselves. Um, here's here's the next thing that I want to do to, to lead you. Uh, many of you who will have a significant amount of resistance with a policy like this for that the church is doing, um, I understand that if you're anti-mask or you don't want to wear a mask, there, much of that, the kind of seed of that, and I understand there's a desire for individual liberty individual rights. There's a demand for freedom. And um, we don't obviously want um, an oppressive government to limit the freedom of individuals. And I understand um, all that. And so we recognize that, um, you know, masks, is, is much, as far as I've read, in the, aren't in the Bible. Um, masks aren't in the Bible. And so this is a situation of, you know, kind of personal preference and maybe personal conviction, you could say. And so, yes, we recognize there's great um, amount of freedom and we want to respect individual liberty and Christian liberty. And so if the scripture doesn't say a yay or a nay on the subject, if this comes down to personal conviction, so then then what what do we do? Well, well here's, here's what we do. What scripture says 
uh, to do when you feel like you have a Christian liberty to do something that may be different than what another Christian would do, or, or maybe we see this in the scripture related to the food and drink and certain practices. Um, in those situations, what the scripture says is that you, you deny your Christian liberty for uh, your brother. And that means I, I'm willing to give up my liberty and my own personal conviction of what I might think might be right for me. And I'm going to deny that liberty in this moment for the sake of my brothers. And if the church is saying something that I might even personally disagree with from a convictional standpoint, well, I'm going to um, I'm going to deny and, and my own Christian liberty uh, for the sake of uh, others. Now, here's here here's here's the other thing, is that. Scriptures are very clear that the reason that we belong to a body and the reason that we're a community and the reason that we're a family and the reason that we're a church and, and have leadership is because it's necessary for us to operate under authority. It's necessary for us to operate under authority. And that's that's what church leadership, pastoral leadership is for. Scriptures are unbelievably clear. Obey your leaders and submit to them. Um, and so here's a situation where we don't have a clear yay or nay in the scriptures. This is a situation where church leadership has made a decision on what we should do, what we feel like is best for the practicing of the church in this moment. And so here's what that means is that even if you may disagree with the decision that has been made or a policy that's being issued, even in that situation, the command uh, from the scriptures is to obey and to submit and to not cause discord, to not be divisive, but in those moments, um, uh, submit. And, and I would just say this is, if you happen to be, you know, a person that's kind of like completely against this whole policy um, of the church, hey, this is a great opportunity for you to grow, for you to grow spiritually, for you to practice what the scripture actually says, which is, um, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to submit and I, I'm not going to do it with like a divisive spirit, you know, and cause some turmoil over on the side. No, I'm going to do it, um, through the power of the Holy spirit. And I'm going to walk in the fruit of the spirit, even, even in matters. And just, he, just hear me y'all. I, I submit, um, I love being one of the pastors of this church, but I submit, I submit to Jesus, obviously in the scriptures, but I also submit to our elder board. And that means there, there are moments where I bring some things to the elder board. Um, and I get, uh, shot down. It doesn't happen all the time, but it happens occasionally. And I even have to be submissive to um, our elders and our elder board. And I don't get to do whatever I want to do and have my own way. Um, we, we operate in a in a plurality of leadership and a plurality of elders. And, and I even submit myself um, to our elder board. That means all of us have to operate under authority. And God has given our leadership as um, the ordained authority for you and our body in this uh, time. And so let me encourage you uh, with this lastly, which is, hey, don't get mad. You know, uh, don't get mad. Don't check out. Don't peace out on community group in this season. Don't say, well, I'm not coming to worship gatherings or, um, man, that's just not the heart of, of Jesus, you know. Um, don't check out. Stay in here. We got a great thing going right now at the Bridge Church, and this isn't primarily about the bridge. This is about kingdom. This is about kingdom work. We got a great thing going. Um, and so don't check out. I, I, I remember um, growing up and, you know, we kind of joke about churches back in the day that they were so petty in their their conflict and their disagreement. And the kind of the running joke is that they were always disagreeing or fighting about the color of the carpet, which was actually a real thing. Like churches literally split over what color the carpet is going to be. And we kind of joke on, you know, and poke fun and say, I can't believe that they would ever do that. I think people are going to look back on, at this moment and say, I, I, I can't believe that churches split over a mask. I can't believe that there was so much fighting and arguing to, over, over, over masks. It's, it's, it's this, it's the same thing. The church, the, the scriptures rather don't say what color the carpet has to be. They don't say what we should do exactly with masks. And so this is an opportunity where we can come together unified and agree um, and not, not fight our, ourselves. We already have a big enough enemy. We already have a great enough enemy. We, all have, we already have enough external opposition. We don't, have to, we don't need internal 
opposition, okay? So we're going to love each other well. Um, we're going to come together. We're still going to engage in worship. We're still going to engage in community. We might have to get creative with, with how we go about that, um, but we're going to um, agree well together and love one another well and demonstrate the the fruit of the Spirit to one another, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, all those things we're going to demonstrate together as we walk in the Spirit. Um, you may have specific questions uh, related to um, maybe a ministry area, maybe maybe some kids' practices or community group um, practices, or maybe a different other area in the church, and, and I can't cover all those today. And so if you got some questions about those areas, talk to um, our, your ministry director about the specific uh, policies and procedures. Um, there and uh, hope to be able to serve you however we can. Hey, let's talk. If you want to talk, hey, we're, we're here. Um, hey, I invite the conversation. So you want to chat, you want to talk, let's meet, let's have a cup of coffee, whatever you want to do. Would love to be able to walk with you along, walk alongside you in this and love you and serve you. Love you, church. And um, hey, we'll see you soon.